artificial intelligence has a variety of applications uh, that are anything from superhuman to super machine analytics uh, big data and automation are often the first places the mind of a marketer or a brand manager or for that matter even a support leader they all go thinking about how they can apply ai to their work but conversational ai offers a whole new category of capabilities that business leaders need to consider when they serve their customers and even stakeholders hello everyone welcome back to analytics inside podcast this is your host priya dialani Conversational AI, uh, if, if for most of the people who don't know, conversational AI is any machine that a person can talk to, and uh, this could be a chatbot on a website, or social messaging app, a voice assistant, or voice enabled device, or any other interactive messaging enabled interface. These solutions allow people to ask questions, get opinions or recommendations, even execute transactions, find support, or otherwise achieve a context dependent goal through conversation. But Uh, have you ever wondered what are the other applications of conversation AI? How the present is right now, and how the future is going to be? To get more insights today with us, we have Ganesh Gopalan, CEO of Gyani, a Samsung Ventures-funded company with products and solutions for omni-channel automation and analytics. Hi, Ganesh. How are you doing? Oh, uh, great, Priya, and thanks for having us here. Thank you. It's a pleasure to have you with us on our podcast. So let's start with the podcast and try to um, know more about uh, Gyani. Uh, seems like a, a, a whole new, different um, a concept uh, of AI and uh, what exactly Gyani does. Uh, its specialization or the services it offers. Yeah. So uh, fundamentally, Gyani is uh, what we call uh, you know a voice-first conversational AI company. So, if you look into the words uh, that I particularly used, uh, firstly, it's voice first, right? And a lot of the stuff that we do are, uh, you know, uh, on the sphere of uh, automation and analytics of conversations. So, uh, in the past, there have been, uh, you know, several companies who try to bring in, uh, you know, uh, some sort of automation through, uh, you know, things like chatbots and so on and so forth. Uh, but uh, so, what we are uh, bringing to the table is fundamentally uh, a product that is first and foremost, uh, you know, multi-channel, voice-led, but multi-channel. Uh, so this could be uh, you could have a conversation starting in one channel, right, and you could uh, you know continue that conversation for the a different channel. Give you an example, uh, you know. Let's suppose we do, uh, you know, we are automating appointments, right? So we work with a US company where we automate appointments for that company. So a person could call in, uh, you know, looking to book an appointment uh, over a telephony line and instead of a human on the other side or a person on the front end on the other side, say 24 bar seven, uh, you know, there's a bot sitting there on the telephony line and has actually a conversation with the person. And helps him book the appointment, right? So this is uh, this is a real conversation. It's not uh, it's not about uh, you know it's asking specific questions or an IVR. It's an actual it's it's a it's a machine bot that you know does that. But let's suppose uh, you know he does he you know he talks to the machine the bot on the telephony line and you know uh, he books his appointment. Let's suppose the next day he realizes, hey, you know what, I need to. Uh, postpone my appointment to the next day, right? But at that point, he is in a busy place and he doesn't want to pick the phone and call. So he texts, uh, you know, to a particular number and say, "Look, I want to change it." Or uh, this is what we call multimodal or bot, which is, which is also on, uh, uh, you know, takes care of this. Uh, this what do you call automates the text communication, right? And uh, sits on the other side and you know helps him. Change or alter the timings of the conversation of the appointment over text. So, so the first thing I talk about here is it's multi-channel, but this is multi-modal, right? So it's like two channels working together, and uh, this is our uh, you know. And later you could use a third channel, and let's suppose he wants to cancel this appointment. That can happen as well. So, uh, what we fundamentally what I'm trying to say here is, uh, we work. We use a bunch of proprietary speech and NLU technologies, right, uh, to help in the automation 
and analytics of a lot of conversations that could be either on voice or could be on text but the unique specialization that we offer like i told you that it could be multimodal and multi channel as well yes it definitely does um, um gopal thank you for um, uh, telling us about um, gani and what exactly are the services and products you offer um uh after listening to um, the voice bot and the different types of um, applications of conversation ai i feel what's really really compelling about um, a, a particular subject like conversation ai is that it represents a it represents a, a whole new category of uh, engagement for brands uh, whether it's in marketing sales or support and this engagement makes consumer um, feel more closer to the brand it allows the brand to get more insights about the consumer as well and eventually of course it helps them in converting more leads and improving the sales outcomes now yep that's right it it helps in growing revenue as well whether you involve a human or you're keeping a bot for a conversation or not um having said that we would like to know uh, with what mission gani was set up and if you can also highlight about your journey since the inception of the company yeah so uh, i'm fundamentally a technologist uh, for the last i would say 25 odd years right and uh, uh, so i've been with uh, leading international companies like ibm and texas instruments uh, i had a fairly large stint with uh, texas instruments where as part of the global uh, you know marketing teams uh, uh, across geographies and uh, while i was there i met this uh, you know very interesting uh, uh, you know person from the tech team uh, Called Anand, and uh, together uh, we decided to start this company called Gyani. Fundamentally, looking, uh, you know, to build a deep tech company out of India, right? So, and that's very important because we felt that uh, uh, you know India has tremendous potential, and the past has grown and built a lot of services kind of companies. Right? So, but uh, this is an opportunity for us, uh, you know, uh, to build a deep tech company. uh that solves the fundamental problems and gets ahead of the curve on the technology uh, you know world and solves problems of tomorrow rather than those of today and uh, given the pace at which things move right uh, soon enough uh, uh, you know we uh, very quickly uh, you know set up a bunch of these uh, you know techno core i would say technology products uh, you know uh deep tech technology products whether it's we have a few products in the space of uh, we have something called assist 365 which does uh, i told you omni channel automation we have a product called aura 365 which does uh, omni channel analytics and we do have a very interesting product on the speech biometrics side called uh, armor 365 i'm very excited about that product as well so uh and we, as we talk more we will uh, you know uh, So some of the things that we did was, uh, you know, obviously Samsung validated our core tech and said, you know, you guys have this great, uh, you know, deep tech, and you know, they invested in us, uh, you know, some time back. And post that uh, as well, we are uh, looking not only to build some great tech, but also to solve a lot of problems uh, with, uh, you know, that are there in the market today. So we believe in, uh, like I said, uh, AI. uh you know not as something arcane but something that uh, you know is understandable by customers and solves a lot of their problems today and you mentioned a few of those things in uh, in your last conversation you mentioned uh, you know marketing you mentioned sales and you mentioned support so we are uh, you know not only in these places but a few more for example it could be lead qualification right that this conversation ai products uh, you know help with uh, you know companies are often stuck with a bunch of leads right and how do we make uh, you know uh, how do we convert those leads to maximize revenue right so one of the things that we do for example is we have a module for lead qualification across channels right which helps customers with that the second is uh, or uh, it could be a product uh, you know that helps on say onboarding customers right again automation of several of these uh, you know uh, i would say uh, technology automation several of these channels to make that happen so that the customer onboarding process is very smooth right uh thirdly it could be like a customer engagement right and uh, 
uh, you know, let's suppose a customer has a query and you want to cross sell and you want to upsell to the customer. Uh, all this is, uh, you know, very much possible, uh, you know, using our, you know, various platforms. At the same time, our uh, analytics platforms also help the uh, companies to, I would say, uh, analyze what the customers and you know, insights about the customer interactions so that they can a possibly uh, you know sell different set of products or they could uh, you know probably price their products better or understand the typical uh, issues that customers have with their products so in short uh, you know bunch of these things and you know at the end even if you just want to figure out uh, you know uh, post engagement you know how has the experience been and you want the process to be transparent and automatic that's when you use uh, you know we have a survey uh, bot as well for that which would make that so a uh, bunch of these products uh, you know that help on customers generate more revenue right uh, and it could be uh, you know a customer inbound conversation and outbound conversation from the customer and uh, it would make that happen so so the essentially what i would like to say that we have used technology and ai right uh, to develop uh, deep tech products to solve the problems of customers today Yes, yes, Ganesh. And um, I think um, uh, when we're talking about conversation in AI, we already see uh, its presence in the different segments of uh, business operations that you have mentioned um, uh, comprehensively. Uh, and I also feel that uh, in the future, we might uh, explore uh, more applications or integration of conversation in AI in more uh, different areas of a particular business. Um, now, since since we're talking about conversation in AI, I think one of the most uh, prominent application is is chatbot. And uh, I believe uh, 2020 has seen a great boom in the use of uh, chatbots uh, across the industrial sectors. And uh, just like um, uh, the benefits that you explained of conversational AI, I think chatbots are also full of advantages uh, to provide an exceptional level of experience um, in terms of customer services. So um, um, I think uh, more and more each day chatbots and uh, other applications of conversational AI are becoming an integral part of business practices across all industries. And and um, I think one such um, that we usually uh, like we all are doing online shopping and I think most of those e-commerce websites are using bots uh, for customer support. So uh, we would like to know that um, why do you think uh, not just e-commerce companies or for that matter even um, other small scale or medium sized companies should also shift to chat bots and automated customer service and how do you think that the role of Gyani would be in it? Yeah, first and foremost, uh, good point. And, uh, we, uh, like I said, you know, a lot of people try to, uh, you know, develop chatbots in the past, right? But what we are uh, fundamentally saying is, again, this is something that we differentiate. Uh, so your automated systems should work on any channel. And typically voice is the, you know, I would say the most, I would say, common channel or something that humans are more most comfortable with, right? It's the most natural language of communication. So what's important is to offer a lot of these things over voice, right? So uh, chatbots, yes, that's how many people started. But the I would say the call of the hour is to have more of these voice bots so that you reach out to a lot of people across the industry. Yes, it, your chat, your text messaging or, you know, in certain markets, WhatsApp could be very, uh, you know, and that has to work along with these other channels. So I would say a multi-channel approach, but voice uh, is very important uh, as uh, uh, I would say interaction. So one thing is obviously that, uh, you know, automated systems, it's a no brainer are great as long as they work, uh, you know, in a very human like fashion and all that. But secondly, what's important is you can't change human behavior right? and uh, so easily. And that takes a little bit more time. So people are used to, for example, if you, if you, uh, you know, a lot of people, you know, pick a phone, especially if it's a problem, let's say with their bank or financial services, they might pick a phone and, uh, you know, call a number and say, look, you know, can you just help me with this problem? Now, a lot of those things are, would be voice driven and that's where your bots are going to solve. 
Now, uh, like, I, like I told you, I mean, every market is different. Like we work with uh, customers in the US as well. And there, uh, you know, uh, there's a lot of focus on, say, text-based, like an uh, you know, SMS to way communication. And you can have bots there. But there are also certain applications where you want to have voice and uh, certain applications where you're going to have other channels. It could be, you know, even something like a Facebook messaging and so on and so forth. So you need uh, a system uh, which is natural and can adapt to uh, customers and uh, provide service typically 24 by 7, right? And uh, like I said, today a lot of innovation is driven uh, across the world, right? Whether it's uh, you know, your BFSI, your healthcare, or uh, uh, you know, I would say uh, you know, e-commerce to some extent. So a lot of these sectors have picked it up. But we are seeing that uh, uh, a lot of these use cases are going to be applicable for, I would say, mid-size and small-size customers. In fact, we work with a number of mid-size customers across the you know, across the globe, helping them uh, with automation uh, of their processes. And we have, uh, you know, and we, and we talk more on the core tech. Uh, so what's driving that also is we have uh, what we call the new code, uh, you know, uh, automation platform that works across channels, uh, across uh, I would say uh, you know use cases where we have pre-trained bots that can be launched within a day. So see, these are some of the uh, you know things that we feel uh, you know will be adopted uh, without a doubt uh, by uh, I would say not just enterprises but uh, like you suggested mid-size and SMEs uh, over the next uh, two years. Right, I uh, I completely agree with uh, you, Ganesh. And I think uh, um, artificial intelligence uh, is the um, underlying of. Uh technology when we're talking about chatbots and other technologies uh, but I feel artificial intelligence platforms are uh, all the more impressive uh, in the light of the fact that they can hold conversations and clients can can give a personalized experience so uh, organizations institutions are uh, changing from bots to AI platforms since they're searching for more intelligent solutions so um, having said that how do you feel um, uh, that Gyani is different from other players in the market or what sets Gyani different or, or sets apart in the market see uh, first and foremost we're here to solve the problems uh, that are there today and uh, so we are uh, in the business i would say of saying telling customers these are ready solutions we have for your problems yes they are ai based but it's not that you know we need to spend like six months with you to figure out what your problems are and solve them these are ready AI solutions for your problems, just like any other piece of software that you can pick our uh, software and you know apply it immediately. So our rule of thumb is a customer should be typically live within a couple of weeks, right, at the most, right. And that's the value that we uh, fundamentally provide. We don't go to a customer and say, you know, tell us what you want us to do. Secondly, uh, you know, talk about some of the key things that we have. Uh, you know, first and foremost, we are. Uh, uh, I use the term voice led. So there are a lot of companies that jumped into chatbots, uh, you know, in the last few years. I mean, uh, chatbots have become such a commodity today that, you know, for example, my son is in 12th grade and, you know, he can develop a chat. So, uh, but what is important and where it gets more complex is when you bring voice into the equation, when you bring multiple chatbots into the, uh, multiple channels into the equation and make sure that, uh, you know, a person can you know, talk in a multimodal format to multiple of these channels. So that's where we uh, think we have, uh, you know, a very good position. The second thing is we have this, uh, uh, you know, very interesting pre-trained intents, right, for multiple, I would say, uh, you know, domains. So let's suppose, uh, you know, you want to do some things, let's suppose, uh, say, uh, say, BFSI in India or healthcare, US. So just give you a couple of examples and if you, you feel the value comes when it's about uh, you know the solving the granular business flows right so do you have a product for example for say collections for say uh, you know automobile sector and maybe get a little more deeper and say that for a two-wheeler customer or four-wheeler customer so that's when uh, 
you know because uh, your product is then tuned to solve that problem and makes that uh, and you can launch that from day one and customers start seeing value uh, similarly like i told you about uh, specific use cases uh, you know like appointments where we have these ready solutions and customers can just take take it and launch it and we, that's what we have done with uh, say few uh, you know customers around the world so a bunch of these factors uh, you know go into uh, you know making us unique and the other important factor is uh, we have a lot of this core tech that helps us to uh, you know customize our products we typically don't use apis from different folks and you know things like that so for us it's our own system and that helps us uh, you know customize uh, and get the best accuracies out of the system in addition we are integrated to all the standard platforms uh, any connectivity platform that you have in the market uh, be the likes of Huawei it could be the likes of Google uh, you know uh, or Amazon connect and uh, you know on the CRM side we you know align to all of them and that makes us a product that customers can take today uh, and uh, you know solve their problems within the matter of a few days and i think there's a bunch of those things i could talk a little bit more but these are some of those things that you know make us unique compared to the other players in the market yeah that's completely right i think um a simple integration and uh, making integration flexible across different products or platforms already um uh, the organizations have deployed does make um agani sound uh, sets apart uh, from the other players in the market um so um since we are talking about ai i think one of the most uh, heated discussions that we have had around ai is does this replace human beings but of course it it not really um, uh, replaces human beings i think uh, uh, we are having talking to different experts and uh, industry leaders uh, uh, during such podcast uh, uh, ai as well as i believe conversation ai gives us help and expertise in a variety of places uh, that we simply don't have enough humans for and where humans will find a task uh, boring or discouraging or uh, where hiring humans are too expensive and in addition to that i think when conversational ai automate some of the more um, um dull and repetitive tasks that humans have to do it frees them and makes them more productive so um, when we are talking about the conversational ai and um, uh, i would also like to uh, picture in india over here and we would want to know that what do you think is the potential of conversational ai in a country like india so i think uh, firstly there are no geographical barriers to conversational ai right I think there are applications across the world, and we work uh, not only with uh, customers in India, but we work with customers uh, across the world to solve their problems. Right? And if you uh, really look at it, like you correctly said, it's uh, it's trying to identify problems that are best done by bots, and typically uh, will free up uh, you know humans for more complex tasks. And that is happening uh, as we speak. Uh, we are uh, typically solving problems with uh, you know that typically can't be done by say uh, you know human beings or it can't be done at that scale right i mean i'll give you an example i mean you, uh, since you mentioned uh, you know if, for example if you take india i'll also mention some uh, examples from around the world uh, uh, let's suppose uh, you know you are looking at uh, you know uh, a farmer let's say in a small uh, village right trying to find the price of a certain crop right uh, using conversational ai and he wants to find it across you know uh, across the country at any monthly and he wants to figure out what is the right price and uh, you know so using conversational ai we can enable multiple channels maybe to just pick his phone uh, you know you know if it's a feature phone call the number right and he could get uh you know the answers to his question by just having a conversation maybe in his own language a similar thing could happen say in africa uh there are uh, potential for using this technology uh you know uh, to potentially reduce uh, malnutrition by providing uh, you know kind of a conversational ai for say expectant mothers uh so there's a bunch of use cases that you know in the social space but there are also the you know uh, use cases in uh, 
say present day say let's suppose uh, banking and finance right so let's suppose uh, customers want to call in and figure out uh, you know somebody uh, wants to call and say you know want to uh, find out uh, what is the his current account balance right now uh, you don't want to get into wait times like it happens in a lot of these uh, uh, you know call centers that you know these banks run today so if we have these automated uh, systems that uh, some of the stuff that we build for example so there could be zero wait times and customers get answers to their questions and problems right without uh, and in any channel of their choice so this is uh, some of those you know really cool benefits that conversational ai brings uh, you know across the globe right where it's going to make your overall experience better uh, i mean we, like we've seen very different use cases across the world but there is a fundamental similarity where uh, you know a lot of these repetitive or i would say routine tasks are will you know are automated by conversational ai and uh, we are seeing applications across like i said healthcare or uh, Uh, applications across uh, banking and financial services application in e-commerce and so on and so forth yes um i think i completely agree um uh, with you that of course it doesn't have um any uh, geographical barriers or and it is applicable everywhere uh, also i would like to pick up one point uh, uh, that you said that uh, when uh, with conversation ai you know the wait times uh, have been uh, minimized and uh, there's more faster interaction and a more faster uh, resol- uh, resolution of uh, queries and complaints for that matter uh, but i think while users or uh, we for a matter are appreciating the way that um conversation ai or a voice bot or speech recognition uh, is multiple times uh, faster um, in uh, than messaging from a cell phone uh, i think data security is a major issue for a lot of users now despite the fact that we have data regulation across the globe and it's trying to solve the problem uh, it is it is as if feasible for our companies to infer critical words and advantages from a conversation ai even while uh, conforming to the most stringent of data protection regulations uh, if if i want to quote an example such as gdpr so while this is one such challenge you know we would like to know if there are more any challenges that you have faced till date in terms of conversation ai or uh, how gani has been able to uh, um reach out about its products and services to its users so i think that's a very important point as conversations become more automated right uh, obviously you need to be more careful of the security right so that's why we are convinced that you need multiple biometric platforms right and uh, which will grow in importance as more and more of these conversations get automated In that context, we have just recently launched a voice biometric platform, what we call as Armor Three Sixty Five. Extremely excited because customers are finding it, uh, you know, more accurate, and uh, in some of the global companies as well. And so, what is fantastic about this product is that it is uh, does three things, right? Uh, it does uh, firstly fraud detection, right, which is what you kind of pointed out, you know. Let's say somebody tries to mimic your voice, uh, you know, and tries to talk to the bot, and tries to, you know, get us some transactions done. Right? So the voice biometric thing will prevent things like that. So we analyze, uh, you know, we this Arma three sixty five product of ours, you know, looks at about one forty plus vectors, and uh, you know, one forty plus sorry uh, features uh, of the vocal track, and looks at. Uh, you know identifying whether it's a right person or not and we've seen phenomenal accuracies of over 99% the second thing is see look at this product right it not only does this fraud detection but let's suppose the uh, you know you have identified this person with a very high level of confidence to be the right person then customer service needs to ask fewer questions before uh, you know to authenticate the person and so so there's a overall time saved from the customer service and the person uh, you know the customer is very happy because he is able to get to his problem faster right so this solves uh, you know uh, twin problems of fraud detection it solves uh, it re- results in great customer experience and also results in you know a uh, huge efficiencies and agents can do a lot more with uh, you know the time and address more customers with the you know the time they have 
so uh, so this is one very exciting product of ours that fits in well to this uh, you know the problem that you kind of mentioned yes uh, but uh, the other thing you uh, what we need to talk about some of the other challenges so i guess uh, i i would say more like more than challenges these are opportunities and learnings that we have had uh, see one of the important parts is to make your conversations more human like right? you don't want a robotic experience for a customer so we have the gone ahead and built uh, you know a lot of lot of technologies uh, and used uh, you know used lot of energy kind of tools what we call natural language generation kind of tools which uh, you know simulate the real human conversation right? and we've seen huge uh, i would say improvements in customer you know conversions for various products we're very excited about making all this stuff more human and these are great opportunities more broadly from an industry adoption standpoint i would say uh, you know uh, i would say prior to the pandemic it was more like you know we had to go tell customers that look you know it's time to do digital transformation especially in the conversation ai space but today uh, you have customers uh, coming to you and telling you you know what i want to do this uh, you know we have, we agree i mean there's no longer in the boardrooms now it's out in the operational world where uh, you know customers want to implement uh, all these conversational ai practices and uh, quickly gain the benefits yes i completely agree with you ganesh i think um, uh, we need to explore opportunities where we are trying to make uh, uh, everything around us more like human and not something uh, robotic especially when everything around us is getting automated day by day um that that brings us uh, to my last question and that would be how would you see the future of conversation ai so i think uh, you know obviously conversation ai has come a long way uh, you know the last couple of years but uh, we we expect a lot more changes in the next few years i mean i, I can give you a few examples uh, uh, we expect uh, you know a lot of this stuff also maybe to some extent augment the offline experience uh, where you can actually talk to some sort of a bot at a store as well uh, you know and uh, where you know let's suppose you don't have a salesman i don't uh, you know for a particular department but there could be uh, you know some sort of a persona or a character with which you can have a conversation then uh, across the uh, you know across industries especially on the consumer side we are going to see a lot of uh, i would say actual conversational commerce right right now it is more like you got to go pick us let's suppose you go to any of the leading uh, e-commerce companies you go pick a product uh, read some reviews and buy it but what if it you could converse right and ask uh, you know specific questions about those products let's suppose you had a unique question you know you you went on to buy a product say a particular uh, you know say a particular dress but you wanted to ask some specific products on uh, you know uh, you know what is the product made of uh, you know is it pure cotton is it you know synthetic let's suppose you wanted to ask a few questions and then you know and then make a decision right now all this is going to happen in uh, you know at some time in the future and we're going to have a lot of uh, different decisions that companies uh, you know or brands come up so what kind of persona do you want to have with these bots right and that clearly reflects the personality or the the brand image of the company uh secondly you're going to have lot more new things like uh, you know we're like working with some customers to uh, personalization uh, uh on their communication so we do some sort of a voice cloning for that customer where uh, you know uh, they can have personalized messages uh, that they give out to individual customers so a lot of the, uh, you know mass market communication in the past has been uh, you know the personalized now uh, but the time is going to happen uh, you know what uh, you know voice bots and this technology are going to make it possible to do is uh, you know hyper i would say personalization and a bunch of those things uh, which is which will really drive i would say conversational commerce right uh, build great customer experiences i think in the next few years you'll be surprised that you actually Uh, waited for five minutes just to find out what your bank balance was. 
and uh, a lot more experiences that uh, you know were not possible today will happen uh, in the near future. Definitely, Aganesh. I think we are going to see more of our uh, personalized experiences, and uh, I believe each industry sees different outcomes. But uh, in a world where mass marketing is uh, slowly giving um, a one-to-one brand building, conversation experiences uh, will definitely play a key role in generating such one-to-one experiences and uh, leveraging the information they provide. Uh, that helps uh, brands in having an edge, uh, no matter what the core offering is. So as to go along, go along. I think uh, companies will need a conversation AI platform uh, with a flexible architecture uh, to empower it to be designed to address an individual company's issues, just like you mentioned. And I think over various uh, geologies and legitimate necessities. So I think that this might also incorporate self-host the entire deployment whenever required. Thank you so much, Ganesh, for uh, taking out time and being on a podcast today. I think it was an interactive and insightful one where we discovered more about conversational AI and uh, what the future would be. So it was a pleasure having you with us today. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks a lot, Priya. Appreciate it. Great. Uh, so for our listeners, stay tuned for more such podcast. Uh, you can um, uh, subscribe to our channel on Spotify, Google Podcast, and SoundCloud. for more such insightful podcast stay tuned for more such podcast thank you so much